Hello, my fellow mammals. What's up, my mammals? In reference to uh, humans, not, not the shark. <laughs> I recently discovered LPS sharks, and are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at how cute they are. Oh my goodness. So hi, welcome if you're new. My name is Hello Studios. I'm a longtime LPS enthusiast and an LPS customizer in specifics. I've made custom since 2017, and recently we have been making a series on this channel called LPS Ugly Too Cute. The ugly LPS are in reference to generation f bleh, generation three. Ew, there's like hair on my desk. <laughs> I just cleaned in here. <laughs> this is the problem with having long hair. It's just, it's like living in a constant state of woolly mammoth. As I've mentioned again and again, generation three is just the least popular generation in the LPS fandom. The LPS molds themselves are kind of weirdly shaped. And also the paint jobs are very weird. They're very known for their humongous eyelashes. Basically the third generation has been shunned. Nobody buys them, nobody uses them. I never see them in LPS videos. I never see people customizing them. So the point of this ugly to cute LPS customizing series is to try to paint these abominations and see what we can make. For last week's video, we painted a koala and this week's video is something I'm actually really excited for. I've been wanting to paint the space for a while, and uh, you'll see why. Let's introduce her. Welcome to the stage. Please come on board. It is marine themed. I'm feeling very marine excited re bleh, recently. I don't know why, what it is. Like, I've always liked the ocean, but something about the atmosphere of, like, the beach and all the creatures that live in the ocean is just so mysterious and interesting. Par on theme with this newest excitement of mine, may I introduce the most exquisite creature in all of the ocean. Please welcome my lady, whipped cream nose. So I've had the pleasure of naming all of the <laughs> participants in our show so far, Mr. Eyeballs, Mrs. Flappy, you know, you know them if you know them. Um, this time I wanted you guys to name her, and after asking what the name should be, the most voted one was Milady Whipped Cream Nose, voted 41%. We also had Mrs. Swoosh, Mrs. Seafoam, and Mrs. Boopy Snoot. Thank you, Chives, for suggesting such a beautiful name. Now we have Milady Whipped Cream Nose, everyone. <laughs> okay, talking about the actual base for a second here, I actually really like how this is sculpted. Removing the atrocious paint job, it actually has a lot of potential and I'm excited to see what this will look like painted. She looks like she's got some doo-doo smeared on her, but it's okay, we'll cover it. This tail is kind of interesting because you can see it's a different type of rubber. It's actually like movable. I'm a little bit nervous about painting this material. I'm not sure if it will cause the paint to crack over time, so I'm probably gonna have to prep this with something. I actually have a G2 version of the dolphin and I'd love to show you a little comparison over the generations. Okay, so this is what the generation two, I think, I believe this is generation two, one of the older molds. And as you can see, they are quite different. I do prefer how the new generation has these circular eyes, even though I prefer the paint job of this old generation. I mean, it's really down to personal preference, which one do you like better? The new generation one is just sculpted in a more interesting way. I think from a front perspective, this one looks really cute. <laughs> it looks so derpy. We could start a new series on my channel just painting the old LPS with the obscure bases, like painting dolphins or sharks. Yes, are you kidding me? Center stage. Okay, you know, why are we even talking about the dolphins? <laughs> Let me just put these in the background. I'm actually obsessed with these. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Someone should help me name these sharks because they're so cute. Okay, we're gonna keep them back there. So I have this little filer. I've had a lot of people commenting to file down the paint. <clears throat> I use this pretty often for sanding down clay pieces, but people were saying in the comments, since I don't want to use acetone to remove paint, I could just file the actual plastic. This is a very fine file, so I don't think it'll leave any marks, but... I've never tried this before. Finding an alternative to acetone it would be really great for me because I really avoid using that stuff if I can. Whoa, it's actually like sanding that off. That's crazy, look at that. Some people were saying this is commonly used in doll customizing to prep plastic bases for the paint to stick to. I'm gonna be really gentle because I really don't want to create a textured look on a marine animal that's supposed to be made of blubberous material. 
I think that's actually really working. What? That's so weird. Don't even worry about it, Mrs. Whipped Cream Nose. We're just sanding your eyeballs a bit. It's fine. Yeah, you can see it coming off on the nail filer. This is great. I love this. Definitely recommend so far. It doesn't really seem like it's marking the LPS. I'm not using this side. It's worth noting. This is like the grainier side. I'm using the very fine side. These are like inexpensive little nail filers. You can probably get at the dollar store or something if you want to try this. Okay, so I was kind of toying with the idea of re-sculpting this rubber tail. I was a little bit worried about painting it, but honestly, it'll probably be okay. I actually just want to glue this down at least because I don't want it to be have a gap there. This stuff is wonderful. I love it. Don't worry, you won't fail a thing. Press that pretty... Hopefully that'll erase most of that gap. Oop. Every time I use this stuff, I get it on my fingers. It doesn't matter what I do. I went a little bit crazy there with the super glue. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty dry. I don't want to paint right on top of this without this being dry or else it's going to mess up with, mess up my paint brushes. Now that we sand in my lady whipped cream nose, we are well we are ready to paint. I know I've sculpted on every single one of these these LPS customs so far in this series, but I don't think that this one actually needs it. I kind of think I can just go right in and paint. Her design is pretty simple. I don't see anything atrocious that needs fixed. <clears throat> okay, this is a good time to mention how I'm going to be painting her. So thank you to Wild for suggesting Atlantic White-Sided Dolphin. This dolphin's really beautiful. I've never seen it before. I didn't really know that dolphins came in different colors, even though that sounds kind of like dumb, but I actually didn't really know that, which is kind of interesting. They all, they come in different colors. They're not just gray. And I didn't really want to paint an uh, all gray dolphin because that's a little bit boring. So I thought this dolphin was a really good suggestion. It has this sort of streamlined look, different colors kind of streaking through the design, mostly monochrome, but it also has a sort of yellowish stripe. I think that'll be really fun to paint. I like this design as well. It kind of reminds me of an orca. So seeing the dolphin painted like this, yes. Painting from nature has been my jam recently. <laughs> it's so satisfying. I don't know what it is. It's so fun to look off an image and just paint directly from it. So we're going to start with a white base coat. Mostly the white is present along its bottom half and then it gets really dark up here. So I really won't have to worry too much about painting the top fully, but I think even to neutralize some of these colors, let's go ahead and do a white base coat. All my brushes are super dirty from this past project I've been doing. I was dry brushing really big pieces of plastic, so now they are kind of dusty. Hopefully that doesn't transfer onto Mrs. Whipped Cream Nose here. I don't know why I have like a hundred brushes and all of them are ruined. I just keep buying more. I can't throw them out because Maybe they could be useful. This might be a little bit gray from the paint still present on this brush, but whatever. Oh my gosh! I'm so excited to see this one painted. Yeah, it's going on kind of brown. <laughs> it's not gonna matter too much. It's just the first base coat anyway, but. So if you guys heard, there's a reboot for Littlest Pet Shop next year. They are going to be making brand new bases. LPS are re-releasing. And uh, the New York Toy Fair was last week last weekend. I, don't, I didn't really know this was a thing. I didn't know about the New York Toy Fair, but I guess it's just a place where toy companies show off upcoming designs. And there was some LPS, there was an LPS booth there. We got a whole image of LPS coming back. Oh my goodness. I'm excited for, there's like this wolf one, Grey Timberwolf. Everyone's really excited about that one. And also there's axolotls. I've seen some mixed opinions about these axolotl bases because it kind of looks like they have a bald head. I'm kind of excited to get my hands on them and paint them. See what I can do when I paint them, if they'll look better. Maybe the axolotls shown at this booth were just prototypes anyway and they'll look different. Basic Fun, which is the company making the new Little Pet Shop generation, has been listening to the community a lot and the community has kind of had mixed mixed opinions on the axolotl base so it's entirely possible it'll change if you guys didn't know i made an axolotl custom like a year ago or something and it was super popular it was like one of my most popular customs on my page so i think it was one of the first axolotl customs ever made and this is crazy okay a lot of people were comparing the new mold with my custom however <laughs> <sighs> Guys, I like freaked out because, okay. There was this whole section of the booth in the New York Toy Fair that Basic Fun had, like the actual company, this is like the actual company's booth showing the new Lil's Pet Shop. There's this whole section with marketing and PR and it's really hard to see. I'll show you the image. It's blurry. It was really quickly taken. But if you look 
at this image in the PR section, and you look down, you squint, there is a picture of this. And this, like, I, this has to be my custom. It looks like my custom, right? It literally is my custom right there. That's like my custom. What the heck? <laughs> I'm really not sure what this is doing here. Like, I was not made aware of this at all. I have no idea. People are like, oh, Hello Studios is not in on it. The new, they're gonna make a new axolotl. It's gonna be based off our custom. Like, no, <laughs> guys, I am not in on that. I have no idea why that's posted there. But it was crazy to see and it's kind of like exciting. Like, what does that mean? I don't mind that they used that image at all. I'm kind of intrigued. I wonder why it's being used. It is in the PR section though. So it's possible that basic fun will contact me for something. I have no idea. I, I literally don't know. It, it's possible it's just there and that's all it is and doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it was so weird to see that though. I have no idea. Guys, my axolotl's famous. <laughs> okay, but worth noting, Basic Fun had a link on their page, their website page, when they were announcing they were making a new generation called sign up to be like an LPS ambassador or something. And I did sign up for that. So it's possible that they're marketing with LPS tubers. It's very intriguing. It's very interesting. What do you guys think? Why would it be printed there? What's the lore? By the way, oh, basic fun if you're watching, yes. <laughs> I would love to help market LPS if that is what that's there for. For the little image posted on their board, I'm actually, I'm not like worried about the credit there. I think it's just so cool to even see it that I'm not paranoid about that or anything. Obviously, if they made axolotls and it looked like my custom exactly or very similar i'd be like okay that's kind of okay <laughs> I, i'm really not worried about that honestly like i don't think that's what's happening there and basic fun has just been so active in the community so far like they've actually been listening to people a lot and i just don't see that their brand being i just see them kind of really trustworthy right now like they've kind of been listening to the community really well and I'm, I'm not worried about that at all, so we'll just have to wait and see what that it could possibly mean having my custom posted there. I kind of wish I could have seen that in person because that would have been very cool, but... And the birds are so pretty outside. It's kind of midday right now. So you know how I said I really like the ocean? Well, check this out! So one of my mom's friends just gave me all these seashells. Oh. We should just put them in the background. They're so gorgeous. Check out this one. I'm not sure if she found all these or if she bought some of them. A lot of them are really beautiful, so it kind of makes me think she bought some of them. This pretty orange color. Oh my gosh, they're so happy. Little happy shells. These are really interesting. I've never seen shells that look like this. They don't really look like they have an opening, so I'm curious what these could be. Let me know if you know. Also guys, I got this fish. <laughs> I'm collecting certain LPS right now that I really like. I'll actually put my wish list down below. You can see it on the LPS wish list website. It's kind of interesting. You can you can scroll through all the LPS ever made and make your own LPS wish list. It's been around for a long time, but since I've never actually looked into collecting LPS, I never really looked into it. I think seashells are so beautiful. I have a huge collection. I kind of have a seashell obsession. I have way too many at this point. Every time someone's getting rid of seashells, they kind of just give it to me. So I have bags of seashells and I don't know what to do with them. I should probably look into seashell crafts or something. When I was really little, like a little kid, my family went to Hawaii for a vacation trip. I was kind of too young to remember the trip, which is unfortunate because Hawaii is so beautiful and I would love to go there now. <laughs> I was too young to appreciate it. While I was there, I remember in the night, my mom woke me up. We had to leave really quickly, go further inland to high ground because there was a mini tsunami hitting the shoreline. I was way too young to understand what was happening, so obviously I wasn't scared or anything, but I do remember vividly like just waking up and being like, I want to go back to sleep. <laughs> and like a little bit of panicking. But we were fine, nothing happened, and... Anyway, we went to the shoreline the next day to look at the beach. The shoreline that was usually kind of picked clean by the tourists, shells, everywhere like huge shells humongous beautiful deep ocean shells had washed up on the shoreline there were so many that we couldn't really keep picking them up because we would just have too many to bring home and they were so beautiful i just i remember that really vividly but that was such a long time ago i have no idea what happened to the shells we collected there i don't have them <laughs> 
I don't know if we really gathered too many. Maybe we just left them there for the locals or... You know that uh, saying that you can listen inside of a shell and hear the ocean? Yeah, I don't hear anything. <laughs> maybe it's like for the huge ones. I think I did that as a kid on the beach, but we were like at the beach. So you just listen inside and you're like, oh my goodness, I can hear the ocean. It's like, the ocean is right there. <laughs> if you guys have any seashells at your house, try to hear the ocean inside of them. Tell me, tell me if you can hear it. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. I was just, I opened my phone while I was waiting for this to dry. And look at the first thing that shows up on Instagram. Are you kidding me? It's listening to me. <laughs> It's like a product link to buy these. That is so creepy. Okay, well, <laughs> hope you're all significantly horrified. Hardest part is waiting for stuff to dry. You know how I was talking about making over the garden wall customs in the last video? This is my idea. Wirt, Gregory, and Beatrice. Ah, that'd be so cute. Hopefully I can do it in time for fall. I mean, it is fall right now, maybe in time for Halloween. It's just, it's hard to get customs done sometimes. They just take a long time and I get busy with stuff, but I will try to do it before Halloween. Wish me luck. I would like to make a video on it. It's just, it takes like three times longer to do a project if I'm doing a video on it as well. Do you guys want to see a video on it really bad? Let me know. I kind of avoid using the airbrush because I don't like cleaning it, but I'm trying to get out of that mindset. I bought this airbrush and I should use it. <laughs> okay, we need a paper to protect my already destroyed desk. I could just use this, that's fine. As much as I don't like cleaning the airbrush, it's really satisfying to use it. You all ready? We're going on with white, so we might not be able to see it very well, but. Oh, there's yellow in this. Okay, well, I did not clean it very well last time, but. <laughs> yeah, there's some yellow. Get out of there, you. It's like magic. Watch this, see, watch the eye. That's where I'll paint. Yo, that's cool. Oh, it got a little bit thick right here. Let me try to fix that. Okay, let's get her off. She's dry. Perfect. So I think I'm gonna start with the, I'm gonna start with the grayish color. It's kind of a strike that goes that wiggles along the line to reach the tail. It's a sort of bluish gray. It's very pretty. This is another custom I'm gonna have to practice symmetry. So it looks like the gray almost goes through the eye. Actually, that might be a little bit dark. Something like that. Also a very faint line. Starts right about here. Goes to the fin. Cute! It's a really pretty pattern. It's so therapeutic hearing the birds outside while I'm painting right now. Okay, I'm gonna try to do the other side. <laughs> The other side. Dreaded artist words. Um, this is, might be a little bit difficult since it's such a weird shape. Then the little strip go into the fin. All right, we're gonna work on the little yellow patch as well. I'm not too worried about making this stuff clean or opaque right now. I just kind of want the basic pattern shape. Something like... Something like that. So the black, it's gonna go like this. I feel like I might need a bigger brush. This whole nose area is supposed to be black. It's kinda hard to fit the proportions of the LPS for this design. 
Okay, that's gonna have to come down. Gonna have to freestyle a little bit. Did like some reflective painting the other day. Hiked with my dad, he likes to paint too. And uh, it, was a, it was a hike that goes to a waterfall. So what we did is we went to the, we got to the top, to the waterfall, and then there's kind of these humongous stones a uh, ways away from where the waterfall drops off. So we walked out on the stones into the middle of the river. It was safe, don't worry. It's like a trickling river. It wasn't like a roaring, <laughs> a roaring river. Um, and then we sat down and faced each other and paint. We both painted the opposite direction, what we saw. I do like painting on canvas and stuff. I especially like watercolor, that's one of my favorite mediums, but I feel like I just haven't set aside time to do it recently. I used to do it all the time when I was in high school. Like, while the teacher was talking, I'd just be painting. <laughs> my high school was not strict. I once got away with knitting in class. <laughs> Kids, like, played on their phones during class. It's a little bit wild. Ooh, look at that pretty pattern. I love it. I love it! I should show you the painting I did while I was at the river. I'll grab it. There was a lot of light coming in the background. It was kind of nearing nightfall. So the way the light was, the trees in the back looked like they were lit up. I found out that water is very hard to paint. All throughout these rocks, there were little waterfalls and I tried to do it a little bit there. I have a problem with watercolor is watercolor, you need to paint light to dark, which is kind of opposite of how I'm used to painting. Like I'm used to painting a dark shape and then I can highlight it afterward, but that's not how watercolor works. So I, I definitely need some practice. We're getting there on the dolphin. I don't know what it is about this series, but it's really making me want to just paint LPS that I've never considered painting before. It's hard to explain. I've always wanted to paint a wide array of LPS. I just kind of wanted to stay in my comfort zone. Too. started to just paint stuff that I've been wanting to paint for a long time, like cockatiels. I painted a cockatiel the other day. Let me, let me I grabbed it. I was, uh, it was in my packing room. Anyway, it's a type of parrot that a lot of people have for pets, and it looks like they've got little Pikachu cheeks. They're very cute. Actually, I was planning on getting one of these when I was a kid, but I didn't end up uh, doing that. Back to the dolphin. There's... The fin gets really dark, and I think this is going to look really pretty. It's a little bit hard to paint these small details so far from my face. That's the woe of filming your painting process. I think a lot of people don't talk about the fact that filming while you're painting is a whole skill in itself. It's really difficult sometimes. This is going to be the harder part. I'm holding this at such a weird angle. How's school treating everyone? I have had the experience of going to a public school, a private school, and I've been homeschooled. I've had the entire spectrum, <laughs> and I have to say, my favorite is public school. I think they all have their benefits, but public school is where it's at. My private school experience was very short, but it was like the most cliche school experience you could think of. There were cliques, the popular kids, the bullies. It was a really weird atmosphere. Making friends there was kind of weird. The separation between people was so prominent, it was atrocious. When I got to public school, it was completely different. I only homeschooled for a little bit of my life. I think it was about two years. Uh, second grade and third grade, I believe. What do you guys prefer if you've had multiple schooling experiences? I think homeschool has its benefits, but it's just so hard to get over the social isolation aspect of it. I know that doesn't have to be that way, as if your parents set up events with other homeschool kids or something. I think it's just hard to stay connected. And since I didn't really care a lot about school back then, I don't really remember learning more efficiently than I do now. I mean, I'm currently in college, so I'm not in high school anymore, of course. 
I'm actually attending community college, which is kind of nice because it's a lot less expensive than normal college. Actually, I don't know how people can afford normal, yeah, normal college sometimes. It is so expensive here in the USA. It's kind of ridiculous. I think a lot of people want to go to a big college for the experience of leaving home and getting your own dorm and everything. It's just... I cannot afford that. <laughs> that gets all built up. Like, a lot of people say college is the most exciting time in your life. I don't know if I believe that, but <laughs> that's what people say. I kind of like the diversity of the people in my community college, though. It's nice to have people of different ages and different experiences, especially because I'm going into healthcare, so it kind of creates connections. Anyway, a lot of people in college get a job while they're doing college, and I feel really lucky that I get to just paint as my job. I kind of save money, go to school, but do something I also enjoy, which is YouTube and art, and that's thanks to you guys, so thank you. Appreciate you guys. I think I'm doing a pretty good job mimicking the other side. It just feels like it's so hard to live right now. Coming into adulthood right now is exhausting. Everything is so expensive. Housing, apartments, food. Oh my goodness, don't get me started on food. It's really scary sometimes to look out and see the state of the world and know that you have to kind of make it. I feel really fortunate that I get to stay at my parents' house right now and save my money. It's really nice to know that I have that, and I know not everybody has that, and that's frightening to think about, and a lot of people don't have places to live. Like, the smallest, dumpiest apartment near me is around $1,200 right now. It's unbelievable. And I'm not even in, like, that expensive of an area. I know there's some places you live that just... Prices go up, like, insane. Unless you're in the middle of nowhere, then, then maybe you have a chance, but... <laughs> you have to get, like five different roommates just to afford a small, tiny place. There we go. Check it out, that's cute! I can't get over these little derpy faces in the background. Next video, guys, we should paint a shark. Go ahead and clean up these eyes a little bit. Painting black on white is the most terrifying thing ever. <laughs> we managed to finish this one today. It's kind of rare I pick up a paintbrush and finish a custom in one day, but here we are. I'm like surgeon hands today, wow. The coffee's wearing off. You know what's kind of frustrating? I can't go on Instagram anymore without seeing reels everywhere. It's kind of turning into TikTok. I remember when Instagram was just photos and now it seems like photos can't perform well on Instagram. So as a small business, if you want to have new people coming to your page, you have to make reels, basically. And it's also frustrating as a person who doesn't want to spend all day on their phone, but needs to use Instagram. And I didn't used to, like, I, it's so easy to just delete TikTok and be like, I'm not going to use TikTok. I can't just delete Instagram. So here we are. I see a lot of reels. It's just a photo as a reel because people know that the reels are the one thing that perform. I kind of miss the old Instagram where you just post photos and that was it. It's a little bit more to keep up with to create reels on your profile. It's just a little bit more work than just posting a photo. But I kind of have to do it now if I want to keep growing or keep from being shadow banned and stuff. Because Instagram does shadow ban people. It also seems like it's just really hard for small creators to be to grow right now. I just don't see people's posts. It's just drowned out by reels. I have to go and manually look at people's posts if I want to see, like, oh, how's this artist doing? Oh, they posted like 10 times and I didn't even see it because it didn't even show up on my feed. I'm just cleaning up the black color here. I don't really want to wait, but I can't touch this custom, so I'm going to have to paint without, without holding it. Eh, I think I can do it. It's annoying waiting for the paint to dry. Oh, that's kind of spooky doing that. Living on the edge here. I kind of want to add like a little detail here. YOLO, let's do it. Cute. Yes, I like it. Oh, you can barely see, I'm sorry. <laughs> see, I just added like a little black patch there. Do it on this side. Oh my goodness, it's moving. Okay, well, we're gonna have to fix that a little bit later.
Okay, let's do some of the gray since that's only one layer. This detail work is so much fun to paint. I mean, marine animals in general are just really fun to paint. I'm coming back to you, marine animals. I'm gonna paint every marine animal I can find. Taking something like sparkly. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just my paint, but silver paint smells so bad. Some part of the ingredients. It doesn't matter which one I use either. I've bought, in mul I've bought multiple brands because I got so tired of the smell and every single brand, it just smells weird. I'm wondering if paint can expire. Oh, that's pretty. It's like slightly sparkly. This is so pretty. This is so pretty. I love her. Mrs. Whipped Cream Nose. Madame Whipped Cream Nose. You are looking positively splendid. I do declare. I had a feeling this face would look nice painted, but this is so cute. Oh my goodness. The snoot is cute. I'm glad we didn't remove it. I was worried a little bit about the snoot, but now that I see it, it is very cute. I'm gonna add a little bit more silver. Pretty, it's so sparkly. I love how silver paint looks. I just hate how it smells. Actually, it's such a stench. I'm worried about breathing it in. Like I'm worried it might be toxic or something. Just a little happy ring of sparkliness. Okay, now that I've started adding silver to the eyes, I gotta do it on the body too. It's just so pretty. It kind of mimics how I would imagine ocean life skin to glisten in the water. And it's almost invisible because it's just sparkly. Look at that. That is so pretty. New favorite paint. You can never have too much sparkle. Oh, that's so pretty. Adding the sparkles makes me so happy. <laughs> this is all I need in life sparkles <sighs> look how like shimmery i wish i would have done this for my orca custom maybe i need to make another orca custom i wonder if there is a g3 version of a whale that i could paint we're going all in on the sparkle now <laughs> it just looks so nice especially on the dark bits love it i kind of want to cover the entire custom in it but i don't want to get too crazy really subtle, but it makes a big difference. This little dolphin looks like it's just so happy. I was re-watching the How to Train Your Dragon movie the other day, and someone tell me why that movie is just so good. It's just top tier animation. The story is so good. The music is amazing. God bless John Powell. I honestly get chills watching that movie. All the scenes are interesting. You just get hypnotized. This might be a little bit controversial, but I actually don't like the other How to Turn Your Dragon movies as much as the first one. I think the first one is just so special. And I also just like Hiccup's personality a lot more in the first one. He's just pretty... He's got like character flaws that feel more realistic. Like he's very sarcastic and witty. And I feel like he just kind of lost a little bit of that in the later films. Excuse me, barmaid. I'm afraid you brought me the wrong offspring. Maybe that was just them trying to show him aged up a little bit, matured. But I liked it. I liked that character aspect of him. I thought it was very fitting and appealing. And that kind of goes for Astrid too and Toothless. They were all had very distinct personalities that I feel like kind of got muted down a bit for the next two films. And that was my tangent about How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> it's such a good franchise though. I mean, like I still like the I still like the other films. They're well done. They're interesting and enjoyable to watch. And I actually cried the last film, the last scene for the last film. You know if you know. <laughs> Amazing, but still. The eyes kind of remind me of sea waves. Ooh, the sun's coming in. My favorite time of day. 
because my windows are over there, so they kind of pour light through. So we are almost done. I just want to add, so you can kind of see on this fish how it sparkles. I got a little bit of that with the uh, silver paint. However, I do have, these are called pearl pigments and I got them a very long time ago. Um, I don't really know what they're intended for. It's basically just a powder that is very sparkly. It's kind of like glitter except powder form. I'm gonna apply it with some Mod Podge. I was going to seal this custom in Mod Podge anyway. I like the effect that Mod Podge looks like on marine animals. It creates a very, very slight shimmer. And I know this is matte Mod Podge specifically, but it's never invisible, so. I'm gonna start maybe in the eyes, see what it looks like. It's a lot of water on my brush. I'm putting it on very thin for the rest of it. So there's barely any powder on this brush. Okay, cleaned off my brush, got a little bit of Mod Podge on here. Going to blend it out. I'm gonna put this back in here. The whole custom got sticky. And this Mod Podge will also help protect the paint job. We just have the highlights. Nothing too crazy. I really like how the eyes look. I'm just gonna gloss her and then she'll be done. <laughs> okay, y'all, she's all done. Are you ready to see ya? Okay. Check it out. Oh my gosh, she looks so much better. Are you kidding me? Her tail looks fine. Like I'm totally happy with gluing it and there's a little line there, but honestly, like I don't even mind at all. But the custom itself, like the colors are so fun. The pattern's beautiful. The sparkliness is super pretty to see in person. I know this will look very nice in sunlight. It'll just luster and shine. Seeing this painted really makes me appreciate this base. It looks really nice and I love it. This has probably got to be one of my favorite customs we've made so far in the series. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this transformation video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you find the results satisfactory. I really like her, personally. And yeah, just thank you guys so much for supporting this series so much. I just, I'm having a lot of fun just painting LPS, all sorts of LPS. Any LPS I could find that looks interesting and I'm, it's kind of just opening my eyes a lot to these bases. I can't really wait to paint this base again. I kind of think this base would be good for a narwhal, like a little horn. I don't know how many other types of dolphins there are, but I'm sure there's other colors and we could always come back and revisit this in the future with this base and see what else we can make. For right now, oh my goodness, I love this custom. It's so pretty and I'm kind of considering not even selling it at this point. Who knows, who knows, super cute. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for supporting me. Uh, thanks for supporting this channel. I appreciate you so much, and I will see you in my next video. What could we be making in the next video? <laughs> All right, before I go, you have permission to boop the schnoot. <laughs> Bye, guys!